Hi, welcome to Stat Stuff. I'm Matt Hansen. In this lesson, we're going to review an introduction to the fundamental concepts of the Lean and Six Sigma methodologies and how they apply to the IPO model, which is the input, process, and output model. Since this is an introductory lesson, we have no prerequisite classes, so we can get started. First of all, what are Lean and Six Sigma? Well, I think a basic definition would be that Lean and Six Sigma are both methods that help improve the processes and performance of a business. All right, well, I know that is a bit of a generic description. There are many similarities between Lean and Six Sigma, but what I'd like to be able to show you are the differences between them and how the different perspectives each of them take in relationship to the IPO flow model. So what do I mean by the IPO flow model? I'm referring to the input process output flow model. Let me give you an illustration of what that is and how Lean and Six Sigma can be applied to that. We we'll use the example of a meat grinder. For a meat grinder, you have some sort of input, the meat, that goes into the grinder itself. Then you turn the crank, which is like applying a process to those inputs. And by applying that process, it creates some different or unique output coming out of the process. All right, now let's go into a little more depth of how Lean and Six Sigma can be applied in this illustration. We'll first focus on the process. That's really where Lean tends to be focused. It focuses on the efficiency of the process itself. That is, by looking at the speed, improving the speed or the flow of those inputs flowing through the process. The intent is to identify and remove any waste within the process, and by doing that, then you're improving the overall flow of those inputs through the process itself. Historically, it really wasn't until about the 1990s that Lean became a lot more popular across many businesses. All right, now let's shift focus onto the output, which is where Six Sigma tends to take its focus. That is, by focusing on the output, it's more looking at the quality, accuracy, or the effectiveness of those things that are coming out of the process itself. The intent really is to identify and remove any defects that are in the outputs coming out of the process, and by identifying and removing those defects, you're improving the overall performance of the process itself. Now, it really began in the 1980s when Motorola formally identified what Six Sigma is, but it wasn't until the 1990s, just like with Lean, when GE, in this case, was the one that really popularized Six Sigma across many different businesses. I described how Lean primarily focuses on improving efficiency, and Six Sigma primarily focuses on improving effectiveness. Many improvement projects will focus on one or the other, or possibly both. But what do we mean by efficiency and effectiveness? And what's the difference between each of them? Well, as I said, you could have improvement projects that focus on either efficiency or effectiveness. So let's get into a description of what I mean by efficiency or effectiveness. And I'd like to use that with an illustration here. So first, let's focus on efficiency. Efficiency basically is saying that you want to achieve the same level of effectiveness, same exact level of quality or accuracy, but you want to do it in less time or with less effort, less cost or with less energy involved versus effectiveness, where actually you're doing the opposite. You want to achieve the same level of efficiency, same level of time or effort or energy or cost that's involved, but you want to do it with less error, or that is you want to improve the quality or accuracy of what's coming out of the process itself. So again, they both have an inverse relationship here, where efficiency is saying you do not want to compromise the quality or accuracy, but you want to make improvements on the time or effort involved in the process, versus effectiveness, where you're saying you don't want to compromise the time, effort, or energy involved in the process, but you want to make an improvement on the quality or accuracy of the outputs from that process. Now, despite those differences between them, we would not say that they're mutually exclusive of each other because very often you'll find that projects may focus on either efficiency or effectiveness, but very often you'll have projects or efforts that end up improving both efficiency and effectiveness. So how do we balance between focusing on efficiency and effectiveness? Which one is more important? All right, I know that is a bit of a loaded question to ask which one is more important between efficiency and effectiveness, but I do believe that neither is more important. It really depends on your goal. Let me walk through an example of what I mean. Let's say you had a car and a truck. In this example, the car is twice as fuel efficient as the truck. So does that automatically mean the car is better? Well, I don't believe so. It really depends on the purpose that you have for each vehicle. So let's say for purpose A, the purpose is to transport a couple people across town. Well, in that example, both vehicles are going to be equally effective, but the car will be more efficient simply because it has twice as much fuel efficiency compared to the truck in achieving that same purpose. However, for purpose B, let's say that instead you're trying to haul a whole bunch of furniture or appliances across town. 
Well, in that example, only the truck is going to be effective. So in this case, it doesn't matter how fuel efficient the car is if it cannot achieve the purpose. So how do we apply that to Lean Six Sigma? Well, I believe that effectiveness should always be considered first compared to efficiency. Effectiveness in terms of the quality or accuracy of what you're working on, that should always be considered first. Again, in our last example, who cares how efficient the car is if it's not capable of achieving the purpose that we have for it? Now, a lot of the Six Sigma tools that we have are designed to improve the effectiveness, again, that quality or accuracy of the output. Now, efficiency can improve time and cost, and that's a really good thing. But when we try to focus on improving efficiency, we should never compromise effectiveness. So we have a project or opportunity that is targeting efficiency, then it's important that we at least continue to try to measure the output to ensure that we don't compromise the quality or accuracy of that output. And lean tools are what we use to help focus on improving that process efficiency. So for Lean and Six Sigma, can we apply that to a non-manufacturing environment? It is true that Lean and Six Sigma were really born out of the manufacturing environments, but I absolutely believe that they can apply to a non-manufacturing environment. In non-manufacturing environment, you tend to have a lot of intangibles like transactions, and they can be a lot more challenging when they're intangible like that because you're not able to see or hold or observe or easily measure what it is that's moving through the process. So it does make it a lot more challenging, but I still believe it is possible simply because these Lean and Six Sigma tools can be applied to almost any process that fits into the IPO flow model. All right, before we close this lesson, let's discuss how we can apply some of these concepts in a practical way. Well, what I'd like you to do is to try to identify at least three different functions in the area where you work or what you normally do that fit into the IPO flow model. And try to ask these several questions for each of those different functions. First of all, what are the inputs going into each of those functions? And what are the general processes being performed in each one? And also, what are the outputs that are coming out from each of those functions? And as you do that, I want you to also explore a little bit further into each function and try to identify the efficiency and effectiveness metrics for each one of those functions. That is, from an effectiveness standpoint, what are the things that you would measure the quality or accuracy of those things coming out of each function? And from an efficiency standpoint, like timeliness, how are you able to measure the timeliness or the efficiency of those different functions? Well, that wraps up this lesson. Check out statstuff.com for many more resources that can help you achieve powerful results. I'm Matt Hansen. Thanks for watching.